Today we're going to look at an interesting app from Lanzar. Yeah, it looks like something you may have seen before by a company from Brazil. Yes, Banda. Looks very similar to it. Let's take a closer look and find out what this new Lanzar is all about. Lanzar and Car Audio, those who know old school, remember back in the 90s. Lanzar and their 50C competition series amplifier, 2500, some of the other amps they made were legendary. These amps competed in classes with amps such as the Orion HCCA, Rockford Power Series, and more. But today we're going to look at current day 2023 Lanzar. And according to this on Google, we did a search says it's now a subsidiary of Soundaround. Well, who is Soundaround? Well, don't get it confused with Lanzar Pro. Lanzar Pro is owned by MD Audio, who also owns Orion. Soundaround owns Pile. And when we go to the Soundaround website, scroll down and try to click on the Lanzar product catalog, this is what we get. So, <laughs> can't find out a whole lot of information on their website. But if we go to Amazon and do a search for Lanzar Amplifier, we'll see all different kinds from the Heritage brand to the Vive to the Opti Pro to the Opti Drive, etc. And then we'll also come across the one here we're going to show today. The 3001, which at the time of this video was $208 US. And yeah, that's a great price for a 3000 watt amp. So let's take a closer look. We got one in. Just as expected, like the band amplifiers, these are horribly packed. They don't have any packing protection in the box at all, and they only come with a manual. We'll get to the specs later on, talk about the different specifications of the amp and the voltages, etc. But if you look right here on the box, there is no hiding it. Banda, audio parts, and Brazil made this amplifier. Let's get out the good old Cutco and take off the plastic so we can take a closer look at the amp. Overall, I dig the color combination between the white of the heat sink, the red sticker, the black end caps look really cool. The only problem is it's really hard to read these black ends here where it has the connections for the amplifier. Here on this one end, you can see the power and ground connections, but yeah, it's so hard to read what is what. And there's also something that says fuse there. They are four gauge, unfortunately, also. On the opposite side, we do have the speaker outputs. They're on the far edge of the left and the right. We also have a single RCA input. We have gain, sub, cross, and bass. Yeah, that's crossover. And there you have it. Again, very difficult to read. Even the positive and negative are difficult to see on the amp. I do not like that. Here you can see one of the fans. You can also see some of the problem with some of the paint, which was not the best finish I've ever seen. Flipping it over to the bottom, you'll see there's a little access door, which gives you access to a switch that says on or off. This is related to a crossover setting, which either sets a crossover allowing you to use the built-in crossover or it bypasses the crossover completely. As far as dimensions, 9.7 inches on the long side, 8.4 inches for the width, 2.2 inches for the height. Millimeter equivalents are included as well. As for ratings at 12 volt, 2 ohms, 2,000 watts, 1 ohm, 3,000 watts, 14.4, 2 ohms, 2,900, 1 ohm, 3,900 watts. Unfortunately, there was no information as far as frequency was provided, so we're going to use 40 hertz because this is a sub-amp. Here we've got the speaker connections hooked up. And on the opposite side, we have zero gauge going into four gauge going into the amp. That way we can ensure we have enough. Again, this is a 3,000 watt plus amplifier. Make sure you use zero gauge connection and not just four gauge. I don't know why they put that on the amp. Now we'll fire up the good SMD Demore Engineering Amplifier Dyno so we can perform the test of this amp on the left. RMS power output in watts in the middle, the ohm load on the right, the voltage for the dyno. We will have the remote indicator, but we will not be able to measure efficiency, and you'll see why during the test. This here's my favorite part. First up, we'll try the 4 ohm test. It is not rated in the manual at 4 ohms, so we're going to find out what we get here on the dyno. Certified test first takes us up to 1% distortion, and notice again it stops and it goes again and stops, so we're not able to get a exact measurement here with our efficiency and everything we did end up at 1558 watts but it did not count up 
Cleanly, so that tells us that it was above 1% distortion during some of the tests. The uncertified test goes up to clipping and it does count cleanly here. You can see we got well over 2,000 watts. It keeps counting 2107 at 14.17. So over 2,000 watts for this amp at 4 ohms. That's really strong. Dynamically, again, 40 hertz is our track. 2104, 14.27. Again, we can't show efficiency. So let's move on to the two ohm test, rated 2900 watts at 14.4. See what we get here. Unfortunately, certified test is gonna do the same. Counts up to about 800 and then it jumps to about 1700 and jumps again to 2345 at 14.79. Let's remove the clamp there. Let's try the uncertified test up to clipping. See what we get here. Again, rated 2,900 and got above that 3,045 at 13.82. So even below 14 volts, we got more than the rated power. What about dynamically? Once again, really, really good power here dynamically. 3,324 watts at 14 volts. Nice. Now one ohm is rated 3,900 at 14.4. Again, no frequency was provided, but we are using 40 hertz because we're assuming you're using this with a subwoofer. Certified test first. Once again, skips around. Stopped at 1123, jumped to 2956. We did not get a clean measurement there. So we'll have an asterisk when we show the results saying we did not get a clean measurement. Uncertified up to clipping, since this is a subamp, it is acceptable for this to get to the rated power. Not quite, but again, our voltage dropped a little bit there. 3462 at 13.68. It's very difficult for me to keep it right at 14.4 because my LTO bank, I'm usually either too high or it drops too low. So um, dropped a little bit low. Dynamically, we hit 3127, but then the amp went into protect. I'm gonna show it here, what it looks like on the amp itself. It flashes a protect light. So we just powered it down and powered it back on. It worked fine. We did a dynamic test again and got 4735 watts at 13.25. Here are the results for all the tests we just showed. Again, it did not do the certified test cleanly and it went into protect in a couple of the burst tests. Now let's hook up the subwoofers, see how it thumps these 412 kicker quad box. All right, so I know things are gonna rattle in the garage, the garage door, it's about 10 degrees outside. So we're just gonna let it bump and uh, see how it sounds. Yeah, uh, just disregard the rattle. No issue here with sound quality with the subs. It sounded great, put out a lot of bass. So thumbs up as far as the power output goes with the subs, sounded good. Now let's find out what's inside. Caps and things to make your subs slap. Turn it over and we'll remove the screws on the bottom. And of course we see the Banda amplifier branded as the Lanzar. Even has a sticker there. It says Lanzar Beat 3001, which they have a Banda version of the Beat 3001. 25 volt 3300 microfarad input filtering for the rails 2200 microfarad 100 volt and here we're going to show the four gauge power connections going into the amp as well as the um, transformers here as well as the caps and there is a fan to help keep the amp nice and cool there's one on each side just do a little fly over there you can see both of the fans and here we're going to take a look at the power supply MOSFETs, show those that are kind of the smaller ones here on the amp. The IRFB448, those are 500 volt in channel MOSFETs on the power supply side. And then we're going to look at the output side. These are bigger. 
a little bit beefier. I believe these are the what they call the TO247 size. And these are a little bit bigger here than the previous Banda, which I'm going to show you comparison here in a minute. These are also in-channel MOSFETs. These are IRFP90N20Ns, 200 volt in-channel MOSFETs for the outputs. There are four total, two on either side of the amp. Now we're going to look at the Lanzar Beat here, which cost a little bit more and 299 compared to this one. We also tested in 2018 the Electra Base 3K, which I showed before. The one thing you'll notice if you look closely here is for the outputs, notice this one has the smaller transistors, the TO220 size versus the new amp that's got the TO247, but it has fewer. So you text tell me which one do you like better? Now let's move on to the pros and cons. First up, the things I like. I like the looks. I think it's a very cool color design. Build quality is good. Band has always done great quality amplifiers. For this one, amazing watt per dollar. Dual active fans. It is full range capable as well. I don't know why you need this much power for full range, but it is there if you need it. Things that could be better. Single RCA input. You will need to use a splitter. The paint quality. Take a look at this. You can see not very good. Also, it has four gauge for power and ground. You really need 1.0 adapters for that. There's no base remote, has a single speaker output. The certified tests failed. They did not run cleanly. It's difficult to read the adjustments, as you can see here. Get out your speckies or your magnifying glass. You can read it. A couple things I didn't mention. This does not come with a fuse. Make sure you fuse the amplifier. It says 150 amp fuse, but you might need a bigger one. This is also full bridge. Don't worry, Fullbridge has been around for a long time. Rockford, Kicker, Alpine, Matts, a lot of companies use Fullbridge. This Lanzar Banda does a great job. So thanks for watching. Until next time, Big D, I'm out of here. Thanks for sticking around for the extras. Let's try the 8 ohm runs here on the Lanzar 3K. Certified test first, and it does look like it um, counted cleanly up to 603 watts, and it jumped to 945. So this amp uh, does not like the certified runs. Let's try uncertified up to clipping at 8 ohms, and we're using the 40 hertz track, of course. Look at that, over 1,000. 1,100, nope, jumped to 1,200 at 14.49. That's a lot of power for 8 ohms. Let's try dynamic burst. 40 hertz, 8 ohms. So like we're going to get right at that 1200 watts. Very close. Yep. 1205, 14.54. Let me get back to testing more amps. You know how them sound waves go? Mm -hmm. I'll be making moves till I'm buried in my grave. Through the system, I don't want to be a slave. I've been doing shit my way, uh, or the highway.